Bay Rig FM Sunday night at 10 Mojo Filter Nick Passenger Rhymes Bay Rig FM Sunday night at 10 Nick Passenger and uh, perhaps that brings me on to why I'm doing the show this week is a slightly different theme because obviously what I try to do is I try to take um, an influential artist, an influential perhaps label or genre or subculture of, uh, of the music of the past. But what I've done this week is uh, I've decided to focus on the films of Quentin Tarantino. Mm. I've got two huge Tarantino fans with us. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. We're going to be talking about it for the next two hours on 87.7 Bellrig FM. Bellrig FM. Uh, I'll introduce the guest this week, with no further ado, this is John Moore. Hello, how are you? Hello John, and John has previously been in a band called Edward the Second, and he's toured everywhere, pretty much the whole world, and he's even played at Glastonbury, and been nominated for, is it Best Live Act by the yeah, BBC? Yes, 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 we didn't get it, but uh, we tried to drink enough of their red wine to pay for the licence fee. <laughs> So um, perhaps if you'd like to introduce yourself by just talking about sort of what you do, what instruments you play, and maybe how you got into jazz. You meet jazz players, uh, you know, uh, giants of, of jazz, who will say that they have played the same tune, you know, on every gig for the last 20 years, and they're still finding things about it. And from the point of view of the audience, the excitement is, you don't know what's going to happen tonight. Uh, I'm now going to sort of delve even further into that sort of wilderness of music and uh, pluck out a song by a band called Axe. 60s and they I've were from never the heard of them. Uh, they were from the California scene mm -hmm. at the time and uh, they only released one album this is this never got radio play at the time as far as I know um, really? they weren't even really signed up to to a label they yeah. managed to sort of produce it themselves using their own money so they didn't make it particularly far oh after gosh. that where which is a bit of a shame yeah but where do you find these uh, <laughs> these a little baby I'm a little lover boy Brilliant. And that was completely off the cuff as well. The acoustic guitar is, there's no safety net with that, I tell you. If you with electrics, you know, you, can, you can't, if you make a horrendous mistake, you don't usually get away with it. But the acoustic, Frank Zappa said, if you think you're a good guitar player, do it on the acoustic. And he's right, because you don't get away with nothing. Right. <laughs> I'm sweating playing that. <laughs> Have some water, drink, drink, drink. <laughs> he liked being a controversial character and I think uh, the way he responded to that when journalists asked him the question of whether he was singing protest songs was saying things like, well no, I don't sing protest songs or it has nothing to do with the war in Vietnam, they're not political, I'm an apolitical person. And I think that, you know, he had a very tight relationship with Joan Baez for instance and, and I think that really uh, struck her as something bad because how can you sing things like that such beautiful lyrics and then and then say that you're apolitical this track requires nothing more because Lauren Hill's voice I mean we should remember that the voice is an instrument and it's the most powerful instrument in the armory of any artist and Lauren Hill uses this perfectly in this song because she takes a raw and undefined beat and she adds her signature yeah and by doing that she has created one of the most iconic Hip hop songs of all time. I mean, listen to listen to her voice in this track, man. Just her melismas and everything in the end. From from one obscure band to another, this is a song by a band called El Gantry's Velvet Opera. Mm. Very strange, 60s sounding band name. And the song's called Reactions of a Young Man. And I think this song is clearly Pink Floyd influenced. I believe we have some people from. San Francisco actually listening tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, we've had a text in from someone. Thanks very much for texting in. It's uh, Kieran. He says, uh, Hey guys, I'm from South Africa and I found your radio on iTunes. He's loving the tunes. And uh, the reason the song was banned over here is because the dictatorship and politicians were afraid of giving people freedom of speech. Brilliant. Right, well, Dark Side of the Moon, I think this w we've reached this now. This is, in my opinion, one of the pinnacles of Pink Floyd. Absolutely, yeah. I, it really was sort of an expression of... Um, you know, political, philosophical, humanitarian empathy that I think the band were just desperate to get out. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It was the whole band working together. They, they, st they still had that common goal, you know. The, the kind of bluegrass singing of the time, because that really influenced soul music, and, and her voice is a good showcase of that, I think. 
perhaps you can tell us a little bit why you've chosen this song, Rondo. This one is particularly interesting because Brubeck who was the piano player in the band and led the band, heard some Turkish musicians playing in the street and they were playing this rhythm that went one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, which adds up to nine. So it's described right. as being in nine, eight, but it has this extraordinary kind of off balance rhythm, which you'll hear in a moment. He said to them, hey, how, where do you get that rhythm from? And they said, well, from our culture, from Turkey, that's to us as natural as you playing the blues. And he thought, OK, so he wrote this tune called Blue Rondo a la Turk. This is the jazz that then sort of changed and shaped the next decade. Indeed. I mean, if, if that didn't inspire you as a, <laughs> as a hippie-minded yeah. fellow, I don't know what would. That's like, yeah. it's quite phenomenal, isn't it? We've only had two shows on hip-hop. There's so many people we've missed out. So I just want to say a massive shout-out to a few people. <sighs> Here we go. go right. Lil John, we missed out. I want to say a shout-out to KRS1. Right, Luda! Um, Buster Rhymes, Got Young it. Money, The Birdman. <laughs> Rick Rubin, Jamie Fox, take real. my money. <laughs> uh, digger, go digger. Roots Maneuver, Justin Timberlake, Timberland, Nelly, Furtado, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Banks, Rick Ross, Avery Storm, Andre 3000, we mentioned him. Rough Riders, Mace, Mr. <laughs> Hudson, Red Man, Method Man, Every Other Man, <laughs> Kid Cutie, and all the other kids. Uh, <laughs> And on that note, I suppose it brings the show to a close. It's been a pleasure. No, it's been a great pleasure. And we've played some good music. So we'll finish with some Miles Davis. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be back again next week. My name's Nick Postinger. Have a very good night. Here's Miles Davis. <laughs>